Hello, and welcome to the Arizona Office of Tourism's Arizona Tourism University, or as we like to call it, ATU. My name is Tyler Lopez, and I am the Director of Government and Community Affairs at the Arizona Office of Tourism. ATU is a series of educational webinars that AOT will be hosting to support the development, management, and promotion of Arizona's tourism industry. Our debut webinar for ATU is Tourism Research 101. Brittany Augustine, our Director of Research, will provide a deep dive into AOT's research and industry-related resources, how to access those resources and research, and how you can use the research and resources to enhance tourism in your area. With that, I will turn it over to Brittany. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Brittany Augustine. I'm the Director of Research at the Arizona Office of Tourism. I've been with AOT for a few years, focusing on gathering and analyzing data that helps guide our state's tourism strategies. My role involves not just collecting numbers, but translating them into actionable insights that can help drive informed decisions. Today, I'm excited to walk you through our 2023 statewide tourism data and show you how to navigate our website and explore how this information can be a powerful tool in your own work. So first, this course is designed to help you navigate and make the most of AOT's website. Over the next hour, we'll cover how to access this data on our website, interpret key metrics, and understand how these insights can be applied to real-world decisions. Whether you're looking to support business strategies, inform policymaking, or simply gain a deeper understanding, um, the session will equip you with the tools and the knowledge to effectively use for your research resources. Uh, in addition to our 2023 data, We'll also touch on historical data on our website, and it can provide context for trends and patterns. And I'll give you uh, information on how to access all of this. And it'll also, also touch on any special requests that might come up as well as customizable reports. So let's start on the homepage. So this is tourism.az.gov. When you first land on the Arizona Office of Tourism homepage, you'll find a variety of resources linked at the top. Here's how you navigate. So at the very top, you'll see the main navigation bar. You will see tabs such as who we are, advertising and branding, trade and media, partner opportunities, as well as research and resources. This navigation bar is your gateway to all the information available on the site. When you hover over each tab on the navigation bar, you'll notice quick links to more specific areas within that tab. This is a great way to quickly get to the exact area of focus you want to explore, whether you're looking for specific reports, resources, or other detailed content. As you scroll down, you'll find a very high level overview of the top research numbers. At the bottom of the page, which is what's on the screen right now, you'll find sections tailored for industry stakeholders, including resources for travel trade, a form to sign up for the newsletter Tourism Tuesday, state travel guide, media relations, et cetera. All right. Now, let's go into navigating to the research and resources section. On the, on, the, on the main navigation bar at the top of the home page, hover over the research and resources tab. This will cause research pages to be revealed. From there, you can choose to click on the following sections. Data and trends, which holds information on airport passenger traffic, gross sales and tourism taxes, hotel lodging performance, national park visitation and state park visitation. You can also click on economic impact, this is page is where you find the economic impact data for the past 10 years. You can also find economic impact data based on the legislative districts. And lastly, we do have an interactive dashboard that goes back to 1998, I believe. You can also click on visitation and profiles. On this page, you'll find domestic visitation volume, visitor profiles, and other customized reports. The next one you can click on is regional profiles, and this will have data on the Arizona's five regions, northern region, southern region, west coast region, north central region, and the Phoenix central region. 
And on the bottom of that page, you'll find additional resources, resources such as niche studies, events and attractions, and community studies and assessments. Then we move on to international research. This page offers a range of data on our target international markets, along with a general overview of international visitation trends. We'll find detailed information on each target country and some historic data as well. And then lastly, research and resources. That tab is gonna bring you to a page that just gives you a brief overview of all the different sources we use to gather our data. It offers different tools and it'll help you give an idea of like where we're sourcing our data from. Okay. Once you actually get to the specific page you wanna be on, just click on it and it'll take you there. So now let's get an overview of the data. The 2023 statewide tourism data provides a comprehensive overview of Arizona's top performances. So you'll see things like visitor numbers, how many people came. As we can see, it's 40.88 million people domestically. You'll get economic impact data, such as spending. We see that $29.3 billion were spent last year. You'll get lodging data, such as occupancy rates, daily rates, things like that, employment, as well as visitor demographic data on the research pages. All of this data is gonna give you a really good idea of the landscape for tourism for the year. Now, I want to get into some specifics on what you do when you actually access this data. So we're gonna get into the who, what, where, and how for each set of data. So we're gonna use the Arizona Monthly Lodging Report as an example. So let's break down this page, who? Who actually, like, who does this data come from? This data comes from STRs. You can see in the green, green arrow. This data, the Smith Travel Research has this data, and then we partner with Northern Arizona University to ensure compliance when sharing this data. STR uh, has really strict data privacy and sharing rules, so we've got to make sure that we're sharing it in a way that's going to work. Now, what's on this page? This page is gonna detail every little piece of data and what it means. So, occupancy. Occupancy is the percentage of hotel rooms occupied by guests. Average daily rate, or ADR, is the average price per paid per, sorry, average price paid per hotel room per day. RevPAR. RevPAR is a key metric that reflects the revenue generated per available room, calculated by multiplying occupancy by ADR. Demand is a total number of hotel rooms sold during a specific period. And then lastly, supply, the total number of hotel rooms available during the month. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get into where. Where is this data coming from? Are we able to get it for the state or more? So this data is available for the state of Arizona. It's available for counties and it's available for the national and regional level. Unfortunately, we don't have data available on the city level. That would probably be better uh, sourced from your local DMO. When? This report is updated monthly and quarterly. Depending on the specific data, it's going to have a different cadence. For specifically the STR or the lodging reports, we can only have a few months worth of data on the website due to privacy and sharing restrictions. So you'll see here we've got June and July up. Next month, we'll probably have July and August month. June won't be on the website. So if you do happen to miss it and you don't get online, online in time, feel free to email us and we'll send you the months that you missed. Next is how. How does this information even come about? So underlined in red, 
you'll see that it comes from an independent survey and research from different sources. So STR specifically, they work with hotels, they're able to do surveys or hotels will report them to them directly and give us the most accurate information that we can find. Now you're probably wondering why, why do I need this page? There's a lot of benefits to looking at this page. Um, for hotels, this data is crucial for benchmarking against competitors, optimizing pricing strategies, and making informed decisions to enhance marketing. You might say, I'm not a hotel, maybe I'm just a business. So if you're a business, even though you're not in the hotel industry, this type of data is relevant because it highlights broader tours and trends, such as visitor demand and spending patterns. This can help local businesses and communities anticipate peak tourist seasons, adjust marketing efforts, and plan for increased foot traffic. Ultimately, if you're monitoring these type of um, data reports, it's gonna help drive business and economic growth in your community. Now, let's look at this as an example. Looking at this data, you can see that the hotel occupancy has dropped in every region that's on here, right? That translate to less people staying overnight. And we also know that means less money being spent at other businesses. If I were in charge of tourism for any of those regions, I would focus on ramping up my marketing to bring more visitors in. That could be collaborating with the hotels or collaborating with other businesses. We know that when more people stay in hotels, it means more money spent on other things like food, gas, and fun activities in the area. By promoting what makes your destination special, you can bring in more guests and help the local economy grow. All right, so now we're gonna get into the hands-on training. I'm going to screen share with you guys and I'm going to show you exactly how to navigate to the website, but just for a minute, I'm going to stop sharing. And just a friendly reminder to everyone who uh, joined late. Joined late. Mm -hmm. Tyler, do you want me to continue or? Okay, I will continue. Everyone can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we're gonna get into talking about how we're able to navigate the website. So if you can see the Google screen, I will go to tourism az.gov. So I click on that. When I get to that, I'm going to go to my hover over the research and resources section. And for the next little bit, we're going to just go over each little part. So let's start in data and trends. So now that we're on the data and trends section, we see at the top here, you've got some of our most high level data. You'll see um, quick access to RevPAR, National Park visitation, and even tourism taxes. If we get into each one of these little sections, which we will, we'll start with air pa airport passenger traffic. This section shows the number of passengers traveling through Arizona's major airports. Monitoring air traffic helps us understand the flow of visitors into the state particularly for key domestic and international markets. We update this data monthly. Let's exit out of this one. And you're able to see back to 2019. We may have data available before that. If you need it, please feel free to email us. We also have the year end data as well. Now let's get into gross sales and tours and taxes. So on this page, you can see how much money is, um, or how much revenue 
is generated from tourism activities. So we can see in the lodging sector, there was over $485 million just in the state of Jan or in the month of January. And then we can see year to date. Or sorry. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> um, so you can see what's going on by sector, and then you can also see uh, tourism tax returns here. Go back. At the bottom, you'll also see bed tax rates for the month of July. We update this regularly, as well as historical bed tax rates and uh, restaurant and bar tax rates. You can see them for each month, and they also have year end. So now let's get into hotel lodging performance. So this is what we just used it as, a, as an example. You can click on this. Let's look at county. And these are going to show the same metrics we just looked at, occupancy, ADR, RevPAR, supply, and demand. We know that this, this information is important for hotels and businesses. We update this on a for hotels on a quarterly and monthly basis. At the bottom, you'll see that we do bed tax rates, restaurant and bar tax rates, and historical bed tax rates. Now let's go to National Park visitation. Same idea, goes back to 2017. You'll notice here that January preliminary, this number is sometimes updated, so we'll put preliminary numbers until we're able to get the final. So this is what it is for the month. Sometimes we're able to have data available. Sometimes we are not able to get 100% of it up. Um, but do keep in mind, once we get to the end of the year, then we're usually able to give you final numbers. We do rely on state parks to send their data over, so that can have a discrepancy and when we're actually able to report. Usually we try to report on a monthly basis, but it can take a little bit longer at times. Right. And then let's get into state park visitation. Same idea as national park visitation. The only difference is now it's state parks and it's gonna have some of the very same data. And same idea, it's sometimes gonna take a little bit longer for this, but if the website isn't updated, please feel free to email us and we'll let you know if we have any idea when the next update's gonna come. Okay, now we're done with this um, data and trend section. Let's move on to economic impact. So right off the bat, you see in the economic impact area, it shows the visitation, visitor spending, taxes, jobs. So the first thing we're gonna click on is the travel impacts. This is a it's a beast of a document. It's over 92 pages. It's going to be a significant amount of data. And I really like it, but it can be a little bit daunting to actually go through it. Um, what I like to do, if I know I'm looking for a specific county, let's say Coconino, I like to use Control F. This will pop up. And I'm able to get Coconino County data as I go down, correct? If you have a little bit more time and you just want to navigate through it, feel free, but it can take a little while. 92 pages, lots of data. If you ever get lost going through something like that, again, feel free to email us and we'll be able to help you out. But it does go over a lot of data such as national, state, county level data, and it provides insights into visitor spending, sales, earnings, jobs, inflation, GDP, tax receipts, and a whole lot of other items. So let's move on to the next one. So Arizona travel impacts, but by legislative district. So right now we have data up to 2022, but in the next few months, we should be able to get the updated 2023. So just off the bat, you may be wondering, oh, this is July, 2023. This is for 2022's data. 
So on this page, it's going to be the same exact thing that we saw in the last economic impact that was 90 pages. The only difference is it's going to be broken down by legislative districts. So this is going to be really beneficial for um, a lot of our government entities. Let's go back. Now we're going to go over the interactive dashboard. So we'll just click here. So this is a pretty fun tool and I like it because you're kind of able to access this data a little bit easier. As you guys saw, the 92 page document can be a little daunting and you may be wondering, well, I just wanna know how much direct spending happened in Arizona last year. You may say on a county level, I just wanna know how much spending was there. So now sometimes it takes a little bit while, a little while to get there, but once it actually uploads, you'll be able to look at the different counties let's say Coconino, and you'll be able to see $1.8 billion was spent there, or there was 13% or $13,000 in employment. You'll kind of get a little quick snapshot into what you need. I really like this portion because sometimes if I'm giving a presentation, I'll just take a screenshot of this and boom, all the numbers are there. You can also click on impacts. And when you click on impacts, this is gonna be a lot more comprehensive. So I'm gonna notice, I'm gonna um, point this out here. This data goes back to 1998. This is gonna be the best place to go if you really need some historical data to get your trends going. You can do this based on state, region, or county. Let's go for county. Cool thing is it shows you what county is. And then you can go, it'll bring up charts just like this over the years from 1999, this is how spending has looked. It's great, especially with the pandemic happening, we can see there was a significant cut right here. And we can also see that we bounced back. So fun tool to play around with. Um, definitely something to keep in mind if you're ever needing economic impact data for the county. All right, let's move on. Now let's move to our visitation and profiles. So we'll click on this first one. This is just gonna show us volume, how many people came to Arizona in the quarter and for the 2023. So this is showing percentage. I personally like to look at the whole number, 9.8 million for the quarter, for the entire year, 2023, we can see these were the quarters and how many people came. I think if you wanna look at the percentages, they're here. It even gives you overnight leisure, business, resident and non-resident data. And it also goes into quite a few more things, but those are the big things I tend to look at. Um, but this is another cool document that you can play around with that has some really valuable information. Let's get into the visitor profile. Now, this one is another beast of a document, 120 pages. And again, you're probably wondering, why do we need 120 pages worth of data? This data not only goes over um, a little bit of visitation to the regions, but it also goes over what people are, how much they're spending per trip. Are they coming for leisure? Are they visiting friends and family? What are they doing? What are their demographics? How old are they? What state they're coming from? It's really a good resource if you need to get into who is my visitor. And it goes for the state and it also goes for the different regions. Now, mind you, this 120 page is still only a high level overview of our data. If you ever need to get into, like I need to know specific information, please feel free to email us because we do have access to some information like that. Moving on, let's get to our one pagers. So these are the one pagers that we've used. We've noticed that these are popular with our stakeholders. This is just a real quick look. We know this is how many people came domestically, their top states of origin, and what, they're, what they like to do. Some demographic information. 
Here's another one pager that we like to get into, Re residents versus non-residents. What are our visitors from out of state doing versus what are our, what are our visitors doing that are in state? We can see they're pretty similar. All right, so that was our visitation and profiles. Moving on to regional profiles. Regional profiles are some of my favorite sections because it's a one-stop shop to getting all the data we need and it specifically focuses on counties. So when you scroll over each one of them, you'll see the different counties at the bottom because we've got specific data there. But what you're gonna wanna really focus on is go right here. So Northern Region 2022. So we don't have the most recent data available, but it is coming soon. And this is a 50 page document that's gonna go over Poconino and Navajo counties because those are the counties that encompass the Northern region. It'll give you a little bit of general state data. It'll give you a little international information. And then it really gets into our travel spending trends. Travel spending, domestic overnight visitation. So in essence, all of those documents that I just showed you that you can individually access, They've been compiled here, so you don't have to do that extra work for the county. You're gonna be able to see domestic visitation, spending for each one of these counties, and then everything's broken down. You can see local tax receipts, employments, food service, the increase, the decrease. It's really extensive. And again, I really like using these because if I'm gonna give a presentation, instead of me having to take time to put it in Excel and create all these charts, they're really already here for you, saving you time. So moving on, let's go on to the next one. So again, you'll notice, I just wanna run through quickly, Southern region is going to, um, sorry, Tucson and Southern region, it's going to include Tucson, it's going to include Cochise, Sorry, Cochise County, Graham County, Greenlee County, Pima County, Santa Cruz. West Coast region is going to be La Paz, Mojave County, Yuma County, and so on and so forth. So you really just need to hover over each one and you'll be able to find them all. Just so you guys know, these northern region and the regional updates are usually available sometime in the fall to early winter, depending on data availability. So keep an eye on our most recent updates. If you ever have questions, let's say you want this type of data, but for a previous year, we could have that available. Just feel free to email us. I do want to lightly touch on our specific Apache County visitation data. We collect geolocation data. And as you can see, we also call that mobile devices. And this is going to give you an idea of visitation. It's not gonna give you the total number of people that came, but it's gonna give you an idea. So we can see here 10,000 mobile devices is about what's being collected. And based on those 10,000 mobile devices, we've got about 41% of people coming from Albuquerque, 88% of the ratio. And on average, they're staying about 4.9 days. This is a really valuable information because you can see like, okay, a lot of people are coming from Albuquerque. That's wonderful. Maybe we should start increasing our marketing there. Maybe we've had decreases compared to years before. And we have this data available for each county. And I believe this is. So this data here, the Northern Regional Profile, this comes from our, um, our vendor Longwoods. And this data was also in that huge document I showed you with 120 pages, but it's just broken out so that you can see Northern region. Here it is. You can find it nice and easy. Demographic data as well. Okay. And let's move on to international research. So for our international research, this page um, shows insights on our top countries and our target markets. 
Our target markets evolve on an annual basis based on the data. So it's important to metric keeping an eye on the different changes. So we're gonna get into international visitations to Arizona. So this is a very long one, or maybe realistically a two pager. That's just gonna give you the high level overview. This is about how many people came. We can see the percentage in dark blue is our overseas visitors. Um, light blue is gonna be Canada. And then Mexico, which makes up a massive amount, generally every year, is gonna be right here in gray. Then we have a quick little analysis over here. Some estimates are available for some countries, some are not. In the darker colors, we can see the highest increases and in the lighter colors, the lowest increases. Here, this is a little bit of a, a tricky one, but it shows you our trends by country. And these are our top 13 countries. And I've got a little bit of analysis here. And then as we move on, we just have the numbers. Over since 2017, how many people came versus 2022 up to 2023. And then we've got the percentage changes here. Please know that the numbers have been rounded, just for simplicity, because there's a lot of numbers on one page. And let's gonna go back. So let's go on to, let's take a look at one of our target market profiles. So let's look at Germany. So for each one of our target markets, we've got Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Japan, Mexico, and the UK we create um, a compilation of data that you can use for your, for your own needs. And we'll have information like population, inflation rate, unemployment rate, what their top travel motivators are, what they want to do, how they're able to plan, how long in advance they plan, just a plethora of data, including the visitation data from the pre previous year. We've got some demographic data as well. And then another cool area that I really like is our, vis our visa data. So unfortunately, we can't get data from every single credit card company. It would just be very expensive, but we do have visited visa data. And this visa data gives, an, gives us an idea of where our international visitors are going. It's very hard to get international specific data because geolocation doesn't necessarily covet, cover it. Their phones are a little different than ours. Um, but this specific data shows us. So we can see German visitors love Northern Arizona and Phoenix. These are our top two spots. And then we've got some others here. So this is something cool that you can keep an eye on. And again, if you want some more specific data, feel free to email us and we can give you that. So this is gonna be the same all the way down for all of these different countries. Over here is, these are our top two, um, targeted international markets. So we just have them here to the side, but you can also find them in there. And lastly, let's get to research resources. This page, you're probably not gonna visit very much, but it just shows you where we're actually sourcing all this data. Um, we work with a variety of national places like the National Park Service, state parks, we work with universities, all of that. And if you ever have questions again of like, where is this data coming from? We try our best to put sources on the bottom of each page or the beginning of a document, but you can always send us an email and we'll help you sort that out. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing quickly and then go back to my PowerPoint. All right. Okay. Now let's get into special requests. So there's a ton of data that's on the website, but there is some data due to just ease of access we don't put on the website. So if you ever need or are just curious if we have that historical or maybe customizable data, please feel free to email us at those emails there. But also note, we're a state entity and we typically provide data for the state, regional, and county levels. If you're more interested in city or town specific data, it's probably best to contact your local DML, DMO, but you can also check in with us.
All right, let's go over the quick key points. So before we jump into Q&A, Q &A, let's quickly recap. We began with data and trends where you can find high level metrics on airport, pass airport passenger traffic, gross sales, tours and taxes and more. We then covered economic impact, which provides detailed insights into spending, jobs and tax receipts across the state. Um, counties, as well as legislative districts. We explored the visitation and profiles, which give a deeper understanding of visitor demographics and behaviors. We then got into the regional profiles where you can access county specific data on visitation, lodging, econ economic. It's pretty much our one-stop shop. We also touched on international research, which highlights Arizona's key target markets and emerging trends in our global visitation. We especially focus on our Australia, Canada, UK, Mexico, Canada, places like that. Um, one thing I did want to include a little tidbit, we are noticing some trends in our international data. So don't be surprised if India pops in there fairly soon. Um, altogether, the data we covered today is designed to give you actionable insights that help you inform marketing strategies, policy decisions, and investment opportunities. So, any questions? That's a very cute picture. Of, is that your dog, Brittany? No, I don't know whose dog it is, but it just looks <laughs> cute. And I felt that because we just covered a lot of information. <laughs> and Brittany, we have three questions in the chat if you want to hop over and see if you can answer those three questions. Yeah, absolutely. I will stop sharing so that I can get access to the chat. Okay. If you run into the questions so they can hear it. Okay, is it possible to add Ironwood Forest National Monument to the visitation list? I'm not sure if they are even tracking, but wanted to ask. So we would have to work with our um, liaison MAU uh, university, and we could ask if they even track this type of data. Um, specifically for national and state data, we get that information from each state park or national park or anything like that. So if they're not tracking it, we're not able to track it either. However, I'll take a note of that and I will make sure to look into that. Um, you can also feel free to email us and I would need to know the email of who I need to respond back to though. So, um, Maybe just shoot us an email. I'll put my email on the screen after we go through questions. Um, is there a breakdown on entertainment categories, for example, museums? So that's a that's a really good question. Um, we don't have a breakdown for economic impact. However, we do have a breakdown for more demographic data. So if you want to know how many people from California are going to museums, we have that information. If you wanna know how many people are going to Native American um, sites, we have that information, um, but it's more on the demographic data, but we don't have it specifically for each museum. I think at that point, especially if it's a larger museum, it's probably best to directly connect with them. And last question I have here, does AOT, does AOT have any forecasting data information available? Uh, we do have a little bit of forecasting data for international. We usually don't uh, share that, but occasionally at like our conference, we'll share it. Uh, we have kind of learned over time that with like, things like COVID, we don't share that too much because we don't want anybody to be, you know, uh, making hard decisions based on it. But if you want to know for international, we can provide that. Uh, just take it with a grain of salt. And for this forecasting information, you would have to email us uh, in order to put it. We don't put it on the website. And let me go ahead and just sh share my screen. Well, let me feel free to ask a couple more questions and then I'll share my email at the end so you can reach out to us. So if there's any more questions, please type it in the chat or feel free to speak up. Uh, I do have one question, Brittany. Um, so you mentioned that ADR is down, but uh, not air traffic or visits to state parks. Uh, do you know why that would be? ADR is down. 
Um, well, I mean, right off the top of my head, it's possible that people just are kind of, well, ADR is down or occupancy is down? Occupancy. Occupancy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Occupancy is down. I think that has a lot to do with ADR. A uh, average daily rate of hotels are just getting a lot more expensive. Those seem, that seems to be increasing. So a lot of people, if you go into our visitation data, you'll see a lot more people are choosing to stay with friends and family. They're saying, you know what, as much as I like my privacy, I still want to have money to eat. I still want to have money for entertainment. And you'll notice when you get into our economic impact data that entertainment is rising. People are going to museums. People are going to concerts. We know Beyonce and Taylor Swift and all of them were there last, last year. And people went to see them. Those shows were sold out. But they're staying with their Aunt Gertrude and they're staying with grandma and eating her lasagna. They're not staying at hotels because it's too expensive. So that's something to think about. You know, at that point, hotels and other places might want to kind of even themselves out and say, okay, what's this price that's actually going to work for our visitors so they decide to stay at our hotels instead of staying with friends and family? Um, and I think uh, Vincent asked a follow up question um, with that occupancy data, like the hotel occupancy data include Airbnbs and um, other short term rentals. Yeah, so that's actually a great question and something that we've been working on. We are going to have a great new rollout with Airbnb data coming sometime in the winter, and it's going to be very extensive. We'll have it based on um, counties, states. And we may even have a few more surprises, so we might be able to get even more granular than that. We're working on that, so please stay tuned. Um, in the meantime, if you have specific questions on Airbnb data, you can email us. But as far as uh, offering it public on the website, you're, it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, I do have one more question. Um, how are the visitor profiles compiled in that data section? Okay, so let me share screen so we can kind of go through that. So let's go to visitation and profiles. Are you talking about this document here? The hundred? Uh, no, this one here. The yes. Me page document. Okay. So this data comes from Longwoods International. They are a very reputable company, and they. This compiles once a year, and they go through an extensive uh, survey. They survey thousands of people who are visiting different states. This is available for all states, but we only purchase for um, Arizona. But it, it's 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 very specific. They do a survey. It tells you here, 18 years of age, um, how many respondents. For Arizona, there was over 6,000 people who visited. Um, with these very extensive documents that have 120 pages or 90 or something like that, you're going to be able to find what their methodology is and what they define as an overnight trip or not. I do want to be specific here. For Arizona as a state, we try to focus on overnight trips. We rarely do day trips where people will just come in for the day because we know that the people that are staying overnight are the people who are really going to be investing into the county or into the state. Um, however, we do know that our local DMOs, because they are, um, because there's a lot of people that just drive through, we know that residents in Arizona like to go places for the day. They tend to have that, uh, that day, day level data. So I will stop sharing. Thank you. Let's get to more questions. Did I get another one? Um, do we have any more questions? Um, well, if you think of any questions after the presentation, please email them to uh, atu at tourism.az.gov. Um, we'll drop that email address in the chat so you have it. Um, so we'll be able to respond if you think of any questions or like, ah, oh, should have asked that during the presentation. We'll be able to get back to you. Okay. And you can also email us if there's anything um, moving forward, but that ATU email is going to be the best option. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate all the questions, and I hope today was uh, helpful for you. This will be posted on the website, so you'll have access to this webinar. Um, if you have any questions as far as the PowerPoint, we can send that over as well. And 
Thank you. Thank you for watching the Tourism Research 101 webinar. We hope you found the information valuable. If you have any questions regarding the webinar material, please send your questions to atu at tourism.az.gov. Again, that's atu at tourism.az.gov. We plan on hosting an ATU webinar on a monthly basis, with each webinar covering a different aspect of the tourism industry generally or tourism within Arizona specifically. We'll announce our next session and topic through Tourism Tuesday and our social media channels. All of our ATU webinars will be posted on AOT's YouTube channel, so you can rewatch the information anytime you would like. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you at the next ATU webinar.